All information contained in this podcast is general in nature and does not consider your individual circumstances. You should consider the appropriateness of this information with regards to your individual objectives, financial situation, and needs. Welcome to Sharing More Than The Sheets, a podcast to help you and your partner make better financial and lifestyle decisions so that you can both focus on the things that you love. I'm your host, Michael Curry, financial planner, green thumb, husband, and just dad. This episode has been inspired by something that I saw on the plane this morning coming back from Sydney. And I saw a couple, I was sitting down, the plane had landed, and right next to me, this couple just come came running up as soon as the seatbelt um, light was turned off. And it's as if they came from the back because they obviously must have assumed that the back door wasn't opening up and that it would be best for them just to run straight to the middle to, you know, take a bit of a shortcut, basically, instead of waiting for, you know, an extra, probably say 40 people to, to, to get off their seats. And then while we were just waiting, I was sitting down and, you know, waiting to get up. I used to get up first on a plane and then I just worked out that it doesn't make much of a difference because there's people in front of you and there's people behind you. But anyway, I'm sitting there and, and I saw them looking at each other and laughing. Um, and one of them was shaking their head. And I worked out that the back door did open up and people were leaving the plane from the back and they must have probably been at the back. Now, why am I saying the story? This very much reminded me of so many discussions that I have with clients where I get asked about questions about taking shortcuts when it comes to investing, um, about trying to trying to time the market. I had, a, I had a thought the other day as well. I was on the highway. Now, when, the, when you're on a highway, when there's traffic, you obviously want to get to your destination as fast as possible. And, you know, there's at, the, at this time, I think there was about four different lanes. And I was going between the lanes and I was trying to sort of get to my destination a lot faster. Um, obviously, I wasn't doing the wrong thing, but I was just, if there was an opportunity to to change lanes, I'd change lanes. And then if a few minutes later, there was another opportunity, I'd change lanes again. And you know, just trying to look ahead, trying to work out, okay, what, what, what can I do differently to everyone else to just to get to where I need to faster? And after probably 20 or probably almost 30 minutes of being in traffic, I found a car right next to me in exactly the same lane it was in. It was in the far right lane when I first jumped onto the highway. And this I found this car right next to me, literally 25, probably 30 minutes later. And I just started laughing to myself because I just thought I've been sitting here trying to time the traffic, trying to beat the traffic, trying to do all these things. And old mate next to me was just going with the flow, following the traffic. And we got to the destination at the same time. Um, Mine with a lot more stress um, and theirs with a lot less. And to be honest with you, I even think they ended up being ahead of me. Why am I telling you that story? Because that reminds me of when I talk to clients about trying to time the market. Now, when I say the market, I'm talking, you know, the share market, investing, when I, when someone's trying to invest their money, it could be the property market as well, but essentially investing in general. And this is one of the biggest rules that advisors will tell you. When it comes to investing, investing 101 is do not try to time the market. Now, some people think they can. Um, for example, I'll get phone calls from from clients sometimes saying, hey, you know, um, the market's gone down. I think we should move everything to cash. And then we'll just have a bit of a discussion and um, we'll talk about the pros and cons of that. And of course, there are some advantages to it. No one has a crystal ball, including myself. And and past performance is not an indicator of future performance. So just because markets did follow a particular pattern five or 10 years ago, doesn't mean they're going to do the same again. But we go back to investing 101 and the fact that we can't read what's around the corner. And I, I like to go back to Warren Buffett's, one of Warren Buffett's favorite quotes, which is you sh- one of my favorite quotes of Warren Buffett, which is you should be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. So the idea of trying to sell when the market goes down and then hoping to buy back in when the market looks like it's starting to go up again has a lot of issues because you might sell just before the market gets even lower, but there is a chance you're going to miss it when it's going up. And 
there's a investor and author, his name's Peter Lynch, and something he says is far more money has been lost by investors trying to anticipate corrections than lost in the corrections themselves. And and I can definitely vouch for that. Um, from my experience, investors that stay in the market and go through the ups and go through the downs are a lot more likely to end up on top than those trying to beat the market. Now, I'm not saying trying to beat the market is a bad thing all the time. Now, some people get it right, but from my experience, I'd probably say it's only 20% of the situations I've seen, even less maybe, where somebody has actually done really well. Like they've they've made some very smart decisions and they've literally sold at the perfect time, bought at the perfect time. I'd say part of it's fluke, usually. Part of it is doing a bit of research, but even a bit of fluke, you know, because no one knows what the future holds. But the matter of the fact is that at least 80% of the situations where I've seen someone trying to time the market, they've lost out and they've either, they've they've sold, you know, and then, you know, literally markets have ended up, you know, it just didn't work out for them when they were selling or they bought at the wrong time and they maybe bought too late when the market had already gone up. And I can show you and explain so many moments in history where if somebody had bought and followed emotion and followed what they saw in the news and followed what their friends told them on a Sunday afternoon at the barbecue. And if they had bought again, when they listened to their friends at a barbecue or they follow the news or, you know, or they just got this inkling that they should buy so many situations where that person has, I can explain situations where people have lost money in that situation um, or situations where somebody would have lost a fair bit of money. So it's, it's hard. I know it's hard, especially when you're when you've, you're invested and you've got money in shares and you're watching the market go up. You're watching the market go down. And you think, ah, oh, you know, if only I sold here and bought here, or if you've got a fair bit of money to invest, and you're thinking, okay, well, when's the perfect time to do it? It is hard. It's not easy. But again, going back to economics 101, is when it comes to timing the market, it's very very dangerous, and. And it's and we're humans. We we make decisions based off emotion. You know, fear and greed can cause investors to rush in um, and rush out of the market in um, opportune times. Um, but staying on the course, you know, following the course, sticking to the plan, has its benefits. Um, I've 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 seen some figure. I saw a figure the other day of the S and P five hundred, where if somebody had made money directly into a um, you know, in, into an index essentially, and if they had missed just 30 of the best days of that 20 years, that they would have made about, I think, $50,000 less. Um, And that's just based off $10,000 being invested over that period of time. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a free 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au. So it's, it's real. And... When it comes to these things, it's really important to be careful who you're listening to. It's important to be careful. And this is, again, as it's why it helps to have an advisor, but to really understand your goals, why you're investing to begin with. Because once you know your goals, you then know what you can and can't do, or you know when you should or shouldn't sell, or you know how to approach certain things. And it is very important to make sure that you have a plan and you realize these things. Because again, think about it. This couple in the plane... They probably thought they were smart, you know, rushing straight to the middle of the plane as soon as the seatbelt light turned off and before anyone had a chance to to get up. Or maybe one of them thought that was smart and the other person just followed the second. Look how that worked out. Could have worked out well, but it didn't. Another situation of me on the highway, going through that stress, going through the, the um, you know, the the effort involved, you know, in going through 20 minutes and 30 minutes of traffic, changing lanes, looking ahead, looking behind me, you know, it would have been a lot more less, a lot more relaxing to just be driving and to just to stay in the lane. I'm not saying you shouldn't change lanes. It's okay to change it every now and then. But the way I was doing it is I was, again, trying to beat the the traffic. I was going to say the market. I was trying to beat the traffic. Um, did I beat it? Not really. Because as I said, the person, which I'm almost certain didn't do any of that. Um, and they were just in the same lane going straight through, ended up getting to the, you know, we ended up getting to the same point at the same time. Or I even think, as I said, they beat me from memory. So, 
So it's important to remember these things and to think about what I'm talking about. Now, it is important to look at the market. Don't get me wrong. When investing, it's very important to know what's going on out there. But there are ways to manage these things. Now, one of them is to look at your risk profile. And this is what where an advisor helps. But to look at how much risk you're exposed to. When we first see clients, we do a risk tolerance questionnaire where I ask several questions and I basically work out what type of an investor that person is, whether they're conservative, whether they're high risk. You know, again, we go back to the the old, um, you know, investing 101, that the term of risk, which, you know, the, the higher the risk, the higher the return, the lower the risk, the lower the return. So we go going back to that, we work out what type of investor this person is. How much risk are they comfortable with? How much risk are they willing to tolerate? And how much risk are they willing and comfortable with exposing themselves to? And once we know that, that's how that that dictates a lot of the advice that I give. It's important to be patient. It's important to be careful, you know, jumping in and jumping out of the market. Um, again, having an advisor helps. You know, as advisors, we we do a lot of behavioral coaching. We ask a lot of questions. I'll get phone calls from someone saying, hey, I want to do this. And then I'll ask a couple of questions. I'll delve a little deeper into why that person's asking me these questions. And then sometimes I'll change their mind or sometimes I'll be like, yeah, you know what? Actually, that's a great point. Let's let's look into that. So it's it's very important to, to have someone there. Now, not everyone has a financial advisor. Now, if it was up to me, everyone listening to this would have a financial advisor and, you know, they would have someone there helping them. But if you don't have a financial advisor, at least have a partner or even better, a friend or somebody that's not emotionally vested into the situation where it's not their money, looking at things from an outsider's perspective. But but again, I can tell you now that there's no better person to have in your corner than an advisor because we don't just have the knowledge, but we have the experience and the ability to talk to you about these things. And the other thing is to be careful of, you know, daily market drama. You know, be very careful when you're investing looking at the market, being spooked by what you see on the news. Because many, many times you will see, the news will say something, this is going to happen, it's around the corner. If you've heard it on the news, it's probably already happened. So that's something to be very, very um, aware of as well. Another strategy to consider when investing and trying to manage you know, the risk of buying or selling at a bad time is to consider dollar cost averaging as a compromise. So if you have a fair bit of funds, instead of investing the whole thing, Maybe doing it over a period of time, you know, investing it bit by bit over a period of time is an option. Not always, but it could be an option. And what that usually does is it prevents procrastination because I find people that just sit on the sideline waiting for the right time, waiting for the right time, waiting for the right time, normally miss the boat. It minimizes regret because if you invest and then the next day the market goes down, you're less likely to be as upset compared to if you had invested all of your money at once. And also, it's it sort of just helps you manage risk as well. In case, as I said, in case the market is going down at different periods of time um, and you, you invest, and again, the risk of investing everything in one hit is that, as I said, you know, immediately or within that three or six month period, markets go down, you think, you know, wow, I wish I'd just waited. So it could be something to consider. It does have its disadvantages, of course, because if you're not, you know, while you, if you're dollar cost averaging, you're going to have some money left in probably in cash just sitting there. Um, so there are pros and cons, but again, this is where it helps to talk to a advisor. So overall, I think the message that I'm sending out in this episode is very clear that you need to be very mindful of the fact that you probably shouldn't be timing the market. You should be aware of the fact that there are ways of managing investment risk and we haven't even started talking about investment choice or diversification or anything like that. So this is just, I'm just talking very high level here about timing and, you know, essentially trying to ride waves when it comes to investing. And the other thing is that you should have an advisor, have a financial advisor, have someone there that can be an outsider's perspective, that can look at things emotionally um, and can help you make decisions based off knowledge instead of fear. Or instead of, you know, or, or will be there essentially to, 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 to be a sounding board, to let you speak out your ideas and your um, the method to your madness and why you're doing what you're doing. Because usually when we talk to someone, we end up thinking about the situation a bit more and we realize that maybe what we were thinking wasn't a very good idea or maybe it was a great idea. So that validation makes a big difference. So I hope this episode's helped. Again, 
There is no crystal ball. I'm not saying that one option is better than the other. All I've done is I've just highlighted the fact that there are some risks to trying to do these things, and it's important to consider both sides um, just to make sure that you're making an informed decision and to help you become a better investor so that you can do better, be better, and feel better. Thanks for joining us on sharing more than the sheets. Please make sure you subscribe to be updated with future episode releases and feel free to share this episode with any friends or family that you think it might benefit. Please visit us at sharingmorethanthesheets.com.au to submit questions or requests for future podcast topics. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au.